while exploring Scarlet Meadows, you are almost certain to come across this historical battlefield. The battlefield, known as Bulger Glade, is scattered with abandoned trenches, dead trees, debris, and broken down cannons. By 1899, an eerie silence rests on this place, but once upon a time in 1864, this was the site of the Battle of Scarlet Meadows. The abandoned site of a bloody battle seems like a place ripe for a haunting, and it didn't take long for that to become something of a game myth surrounding Bulger Glade. However, as it turns out, it's anything but. Players have reported hearing the distant voices of ghosts who participated in the battle. After a while, these ghostly voices were discovered in the audio files, which led people to believe that it was cut content. However, under specific conditions, you can actually hear them in-game. If you head to Bulger Glade on a stormy night between the hours of 12 a.m. and 3 a.m., you may just be able to hear the echoes from a battle that took place decades before the events of Red Dead Redemption 2. Interestingly, these ghostly sounds tell the story of the Battle of Scarlet Meadows. General Quincy T. Harris, regarded as a hero for his courageous leadership during the 1864 Battle of Scarlet Meadows, was anything but. This is just one of many hints that the reality is the general was a coward. One such example can be found up at Martha's Swain. I've already covered this location in a previous video, however, it's relevant today. Inside the house, we can find the body of Martha on the floor, but it's not necessarily relevant, and a letter from her lover, Garfield, a Confederate soldier who was due to fight in the Battle of Scarlet Meadows. In this letter is yet another implication of General Harris's cowardice. After accusations of cowardice leveled against General Harris for his failure to support General Quinn last month and all that drama, he seems hellbent on a fight. I even overheard Major Smith complaining in the officer's mess about General Harris. None of his junior officers trust him very much anymore. And down at Bulger Glade, you can actually find Garfield's body still pined to the tree where he was branded a traitor. And if the ghostly voices heard at the battlefield are anything to go by, then he was far from the only casualty of General Harris's cowardice. Another example of the game indicating General Harris's cowardice would be the fact that his statue has been vandalised with the word coward painted on his horse. And while the Santini Times describes Harris as a courageous commander and states that historians agree that he fought valiantly during the Battle of Scarlet Meadows, 
It also mentions that there were conflicting accounts about the general's actions that were quickly dismissed. We can even meet a camper whilst out in the wild whose father fought under General Harris, who has this to say about the controversial general. Are you familiar with Saint Denis? On my way through the main square, I see this big statue of General Quincy Harris, a war hero. War hero? My pa fought under him, said he was a coward who sold out his men. He even said there was rumors old Quincy was working for the other side. But of course, none of this will ever be in the history books. I spat on that statue and I left town and won't be going back there neither. According to this camper, Quincy Harris was a coward who sold out his men. On top of that, there are rumours that Quincy Harris was actually working for the other side, for the Union. However, all we know from the ghosts at the battlefield is that Quincy Harris was indeed a coward. Ironically, in an attempt to prove that he was not a coward, he pushed his men into an unwinnable battle, stubbornly ignored the advice of his subordinates, and fled to safety when he realised that he would not survive if he stuck around, ordering his men to hold their positions so that it wouldn't be marked as a retreat in the history books. However, this blatant act of cowardice didn't stop the man from being glorified, with statues and buildings named after him, such as the Quincy Harris Memorial Hall, which you can donate to the construction of. Can I bother you for a minute of your time? Can I tell you a little about what we're doing here? Sure. Less than a minute, I promise. <sighs> well, uh, we're trying to raise money to build an expansion to the Quincy Harris Memorial Hall. A shelter for homeless veterans and their families. Can you help? A donation of $20 would put us well on our way. $20 ain't no chicken feed, but sure, I can help you out. That's very kind. What is your name, sir? Arthur Morgan. Your donation will be acknowledged on a founder's plaque when the building is completed. You have a great day, Mr. Morgan. Sure enough, you can return in the epilogue to see Arthur's name on the Founder's plaque, but this building's name proves that despite his cowardice, Quincy Harris is remembered as a war hero, if not by its people, then at least by the state. However, now we know the truth. Quincy Harris was a coward. Driven by his own personal gain and glory, his selfish decisions led to the untimely demise of many a soldier and the scars left in the wake of his arrogance are forever burned into Bulger Glade. Bringing us to the end of today's video. Thank you all for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff, that would be super fantastic. And with any luck, I'll be seeing you all very soon with another video at some point. But until next time, take care and goodbye.